we face thousands of issues in our everyday lives, challenges, if you'd like, that need to be solved on a European level. We face terrorist attacks, thousands of refugees in front of our doorsteps, demands to boost our healthcare systems. But what Europe is doing on all these issues? Actua TV is opening up a set of series to investigate Europe's actions. This is Hara Gyoka. Welcome to Actua TV. Welcome to your Europe. Less than a month after the multiple terrorist attacks in the city of Brussels, the European Parliament approved measures that will prevent terrorism. National and European authorities gain access on a series of data for passengers travelling within and outside Europe. The various dimensions of terrorism. Claude Moraes, a member of the European Parliament, register with a group of the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats and chairman of the Committee on Civil Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs, explains on your Europe the PNR measure while comments on the balances in their relation, privacy and safety. Based on the discussions uh, within the Committee of Civil Liberties and based on the approved measures during the last plenary session held in Strasbourg, which are the measures that are supposed to protect European citizens from terrorism? Well, the main measure that came through in the Strasbourg session was something called Passenger Name Records, PNR. And what I want to say about that is that it's a piece of legislation which is designed to gather information from the flights that we all take, but to do it in such a way, in a balanced way, that it can help or be one way in helping gather together intelligence information to track potential terrorists. Now, the important thing is that um, it is only one tool in the box, only one way of doing it. And the reason people were talking about it so much is for two very simple reasons. One is that people expect the European Parliament, as well as national parliaments, whether they're in Belgium, Germany, Britain, Sweden, to do their job. And we have a certain number of things we can do. This was one of them. And secondly, people are talking about it because um, the member states, Belgium, Germany, France, Britain, were all pushing the parliament saying, please go faster, go faster. So this is why this PNR was so much in the news. And after Strasbourg, the legislation was voted through by a big majority. And it will become one of the, I think, useful uh, measures which will help police authorities, intelligence services to track the kind of people who are likely to become terrorists, so-called foreign fighters, people who be, may be taking uh, suspicious flights uh, between here and Syria, or people who um, are throwing up certain um, uh, information that may be suspicious. The most important thing, though, is that there are balances for civil liberties as well. So we're not, in this measure, gathering information which is unnecessary. So there's a privacy element too. Um, so I think the legislation is, is a balanced legislation. Well, to be a little bit more specific, how exactly this PNR action works? Well, how it works is very simple. When you go for a flight, so you take your flight, from Belgium and you want to fly to Germany or you want to fly to another country. Um, now, with the, when the PNR is in action, it will take some time for it to all happen. But some countries like the UK already have this measure in place nationally. But for an EU PNR, everyone will do the same thing all right across the you, you, you buy your ticket and then a certain number of pieces of information are recorded. What kind of information are being recorded? So for example, um, they will take, you know, everything date of birth, potentially biometric data, um, if that's relevant um, in relation to your passport. Um, uh, the, of course, the destinations of your travel um, and various other um, data such as um, your length of stay and so on. 
the sometimes um, not the actual financial information, but the, the the manner of payment and so on. And the reason for this is because you know it's tracking any suspicious algorithms of um, you know financing of terrorism or the potential to um, take suspicious flights with Syria and back repeatedly and so on and it can flag up uh, potential problems but it can only do so in conjunction with other intelligence and those are the safeguards so it's potentially mass information because it's every day when people are going for their flights but remember it's only one way of doing it um, and it would be used in conjunction with things like we have something called the Prum Convention where member states have to take um, the vehicle licensing data of cars who are crossing borders again you know millions of pieces of information potentially so you, you have to do all these things in conjunction in order to to create patterns algorithms of potential terrorism unfortunately today you have to do such things mm -hmm. but on the other hand when you create mass information collection you also have to safeguard privacy because you have to then do this so on pnr there has to be a limit to the amount of time the information can be kept after which it has to be destroyed mm -hmm. Um, there has to be a, a limit to the scope, meaning you have to say, what is it for? Can it be for terrorist crimes um, or the most serious crimes? But it can't be used for just other normal crimes. Two really important things must happen. I mean, if you're, if you're a Belgian citizen, mm -hmm. I think you're going to be thinking a number of things. You're going to be saying, look, um, I need to know more about what my government is doing. I need to know more about what the EU is doing. I need to know that the EU is doing something because I'm just one country and I'm surrounded by so many other countries. So a terrorist can move across borders. So I need to know both. I don't need to know everything because some I issues will be intelligence and they will be pr um, private and they should remain secret. Otherwise, the terrorist will know. But it's important for citizens to know more about whether measures are being effective or not. The problem for a Belgian citizen today is they're seeing more and more examples of where they believe their government or transnational governments are protecting them, but they see some evidence that perhaps it's not effective enough, or maybe we're spending money on the wrong things. Mm -hmm. They need reassurance on two things. One is that we're doing enough and that we're cooperating enough and that these measures are effective. So what that means is that we need to be a bit more transparent um, about police enforcement, about intelligence enforcement and about cooperation. So if I give you an example, Europol, the agency of the European Union, is small. It's an intelligence gathering agency, but it is very effective. Another issue is, I mentioned this Prum Convention, we have a lot of evidence that member states, when they are acting together, we say intergovernmentally across borders, um, they don't very often implement those things they should. So I gave you the example of, you know, things like vehicle licensing data. When we had the terrorism in France and in Belgium, you need to have these basic pieces of information. You need to ensure that not only are the intelligence services of each country cooperating well, but they're exchanging information well. DNA databases, vehicle licensing. Now, people watching this will say, wow. You know, some will say, well, we need to be doing that more. Some will say, I hope that we have our civil liberties and our human rights are in place because you know, should we be doing all of this? What I would say to people is that we have to do this, but we have to also safeguard mm -hmm. civil liberties. Mm -hmm. um, but we can do both. Let me ask you something here. Ethical and moral elements sometimes are taken into account when we design a new policy. So I would like to ask, when Parliament votes, especially in such a measure, it takes into account those elements. It's very transparent what we are doing and 
also by this all this discussion allows us to try and get the best possible law because you're right the ethical considerations the moral considerations are important but let me tell you another really important thing um, that people may not realize is if you make bad laws you know they will fall apart they will collapse our higher courts in every country whether it's belgium whether it's the highest court for the European Union, the European Court of Justice, eventually, if you make a bad law, um, when it's collecting data or so on, we had a thing, we had a law in the European Union, the Data Retention Directive, um, and the European Court of Justice said, look, this is just a bad law. Now, if you do this, you're spending a lot of time effort and money to create something which is unsafe and it will be ruled so out of order. basically what are you saying is that safety is a priority? The first duty of government is to keep the people safe. Mm -hmm. It's a duty, not a priority. The, it is the duty of government to keep people safe. And ever since the European Parliament, the European Union, um, was given um, powers in the Lisbon Treaty in, or more powers in the area of security. Uh, for example, my committee deals with um, uh, uh, agreements with the United States. You may have heard of um, SWIFT and TFTP. These are data sharing arrangements with the United States to track terrorists. So what you do is you look at data on how money is being transferred across the world because intelligence services can track money laundering of terrorists. Mm. It's, an, it's amazing but true. And in order for that to work between the European Union and the United States, you need to have cast iron agreements. So we are able to do this now. And ever since we had these powers, we take them very seriously. Um, similarly for government, it's the first duty of government to keep the people safe. If a government can't keep its people safe, they should not be in government. So, um, but the other thing is that if you bring in laws to keep people safe, they have to be laws which are strong and, and stand the test of time. Otherwise, courts which are independent in all of our democracies in Europe, I mean, we have strong democracies in Europe, including in Belgium, we have independent courts, tribunals, they will say these laws are unsafe. So it's the duty of politicians to make sure that when they make a law on security and anti-terrorism, it was made to last. Well, I have to sincerely thank you and thank you all of you. See you next week.